Welcome back to the big show. It's Alex Belfield in the morning talking to my favourite people and the country's biggest stars. And trust me, Brian Connolly's a whopping great big one. How are you? I am whopping. I am humongous. And I'm very happy to be talking to you. Alex. Let's face it, you're delicious, inside and out. Oh, bless you. And it's written on many a public toilet wall. I love you. I mean, the last time I saw you, I've said this many times, I felt those boobs of yours, and Mm. I mean, it was one of the most moving experiences of my life. I know. Are these my man boobs, or are these my Edna boobs? Both. (laughs) I sound like Danny LaRue, didn't I? (laughs) Yes, love. He felt my boob. You know Um, what I love about you? I mean, you keep going year after year after year. I just bash it out. I don't know. What's up with me? And if anybody's not seen you, let's do the proper intro because we haven't got round to that yet. You're coming to St George's Hall on Thursday, the 11th of November. I'm going to be there because your live show is tremendous. I saw you rehearsing an audience with Brian Connolly in Nottingham years and years ago. And the first half was really rubbish because you were just rehearsing. <laughs> but then suddenly in the second half, you'd put a suit on and the thing went up and you'd got a live band. And that's yeah. where you're at your best, isn't it? Oh, no, I enjoy being live. I enjoy shows as well. You know, I mean, I I enjoy, without a doubt, being out there on stage is my forte. You know, I I can't ballroom dance. I can't ice skate. You know, I hate the jungle. You can't cook. So that's basically my TV career down the pan. You know, so I've got to get out there live. But I enjoy that. You know, honestly, you know, it's where I belong. Even if it's dressed as a big fat woman or uh, playing Al Jolson or, you know, I I enjoy that response. I've never courted the press. It's never bothered me sort of being in the papers or in the OK and hello. You know, but... Going out there, I'm one of these people that, uh, I don't know, it's just in me from way back. I suppose if you go through my DNA, I was probably someone else years ago. I was probably Bruce Forsyth. (laughs) He's still with us, isn't he? Oh, is he? Oh, God. (laughs) Well, Bruce Forsyth, when he had his own hair. (laughs) And, of course, the last time I spoke to you, you were in House Spray here in Leeds, and um, there was no point you talking to me. Total waste of time because you were sold out. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I mean, it's the show. It's not me. I mean, it's a wonderful show. Well, let me tell you, when I was here, I mean, and I've done many pantomimes here in Birmingham, and I used to have to bite my tongue because, you know, when you get the little kids up at the end of the night, they go, oh, what do you want? You go, I want a bike. And and I'd, I just want to so sort of go, oh, what? A bike? Uh, but, you know, I didn't say anything. But God bless them. I love it. It's the heart of the country, and it's where people have the biggest hearts. I'll say anything to get an Very audience. Nice. In. Very nice. I mean? I'm going to write that I'd down for the. That. I use it for the poster or something. Where are you on at the Hippodrome? Yeah, we're at the Hippodrome at the moment. You cannot get a seat. It's absolutely. They've sold every single seat. I mean, it is quite amazing, and they've probably done it a, a few months ago. But I have to say, you know, I've been touring with the Hairspray recently, and uh, it's like that. It's that type of show, and mm. I'll give you a little. Uh, I mean, it's not for definite, but I actually auditioned for uh, Priscilla yesterday. So who knows? I might be going from one frock to uh, another. (laughs) I love the music in that, but the production was a bit sloppy when I saw it. I think I saw a Wednesday matinee and they weren't really in the mood. You never do that, do you? You always give it 100%. I have to. It's it's in my nature. It's it, you've paid good money, and I'm out here to uh, because you never know. You never. Know. I always think if I do feel a bit down, I always think you don't know who's out there, Brian. You don't know who's out there. The reason I got uh, the audition for uh, Shrek, um, not Shrek. Well, I actually auditioned for that one as well. So there you go. <laughs> oh wow! And, you got turned down for that one, did you? Well, they gave it to the. Uh, um, <laughs> would you believe? Quite funnily, they gave it to Amanda Holden. <laughs> oh no, she's playing the princess. Now they gave it to Wayne Rooney. No, yeah. no, no. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. Um, it's an hour and a half in makeup, so there you go. What's the point of doing all that? You can't even recognise me. Can you imagine that on yeah. a two show day when you're having to Ooh. get ready at 12 o'clock? You can't come out till about 11 o'clock at night? Ooh. No, I just have to go out. Well, the trouble is, and I'm going to confess <laughs> to you now, I like the odd cigarette, and I can just imagine me standing at the stage door dressed oh. as Shrek. I can see those music in the world on. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it, I've set fire to my green hand. Yeah. Hold it, donkey, put it out, do something. I went to see um, another show, and I won't even name it, but I was absolutely furious that, you know, these people were just, they were they were doing all the dialogue very quickly. See, the problem mm. is as well, you've got people that may be in a show for a long time, you yeah. know, but what, what every show has is an assistant director that sits out there and should sit out there and, and look at it and go, no, I'm pulling these people in. You know, it is, um, 
it's a cardinal sin. You yeah. cannot do that. I remember when we were sat there, I, I think it was about three you days... You struck a cordy, you know. No, I'm no. getting all sweaty and like, Whoa, I want to get them. I, <laughs> I want to go slap somebody. <laughs> I want to argue. It's just not on. And that's your job, you know, isn't it? You're paid exactly. to actually deliver. Yeah, and I just think it's in... And it's like me, you know, I'll, I'll go into a talent competition on holiday, you know, if there's a karaoke. I'll <laughs> well, yeah. I, I just, it's in me. I, I, I just have to get out there. I even come third once. Did you? you know, a little kid beat me doing Frank Spencer in Every gag's a winner. The last time I saw you before Hairspray was in Panto, and you do a lot of the same gags. They're your gags that you take around with you, and they're spectacular. Thank you for those. <laughs> is, that, is that a way of saying I haven't got any original material? <laughs> it works. That's the thing. You know, like, it's like the pantomime. The pantomime is so tuned up. I would never, ever do anything that doesn't get a lot. You know, no point in, in, in flogging a dead horse if something's not working. But it's like I remember... Um, Joan, Joan Rivers saying, you know, do you change your act? And they said, well, it's like a tapestry. It's like it gets added to, it gets taken away from. But, you know... It but the you know the core is there and and I think it just gives it an energy you know like with my live act it's been built up over years yeah. the whole fire eating thing the fiddle routine and and all those you know it's just pieces that they expect sometimes and we want to come out with the fiddle and if you haven't seen it I won't spoil it but when I come out with the fiddle uh, there's a lot and I just say you know what's coming then they all go yeah you know they're waiting for it <laughs> but you know I'm not saying that all of it's hold out but there's you know there's some little classic moments in there. No, but it's like Pavarotti. If you didn't do Ness and Dormer at the end, you'd want your money back, wouldn't you, really? Let's be honest. Yeah. You know, I want them with their hankies out. I want them crying uncontrollably. Mm. And the way to do that is to just pound them into the ground, you know? Absolutely. And tenor ladies everywhere, all over the audience, just in case. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> the great thing about you is your voice. And if anybody hasn't seen you live, they won't know how brilliant you are. And you were in Jolson and things like that. But you started your pantomime when I saw you a couple of years ago. And you did the most brilliant thing. You start with this great ballad. And we think, ah, oh, he's going to impress us. And we got the pin focus just on you and blacked out all in the background. And then like a pillock, you fall off stage, which is one of the funniest things ever. It's that kind of sideways stuff you do. You love the vaudeville of it, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And visual, especially in Panto, you've got to keep it visual because that cuts right across the board. I remember someone saying to me, how do you, you know, make a, a, an audience that are from children to sort of pensioners laugh? And I said, it's always visual. You know, that whole routine with the, the, the tree, this tree that I use, you know, when it's following Cinderella, it's all visual stuff. Yeah, I mean, falling in the pit, I'll do anything, me. I'm getting a bit old for all that, I've got to be honest, but I do enjoy I love the shock of it. Yeah. You know, I love shocking them you know and sort of like taking them one way there's a song I do in Panto where I do the song She's Out of My Life well I'm telling you that audience will laugh right the way through it because I'm trying to be serious <laughs> yep. and I wind them up that they're ruining it that you are ruining this song I've won awards for this type of stuff <laughs> but my in my heart you know I was always born to sing I always say I've born to sing everything else I learned you the know, last I time mean, we spoke I talked to you about you were on the Peter Andre show and I was so pleased with you because you made him look um an idiot, really, no. because he was and couldn't ask questions. Does he bother you? Yeah, he looks you? good. He looks good. I know. He's got a six-pack. That ain't going to get me tuning in, though. The thing <sighs> is, I wonder how you sit there, being such an old pro, having done this for 5,000 years, selling out up and down the country, and then you have to go on a chat show with some kid who's never done anything other than sang a couple of songs badly and married someone with big boobs. I don't think it's his fault. I, I think it's... Um the word experience does not come in to the vocabulary. It doesn't come in to it anymore. You know, it's whether you look good and you can read all to a cue. There's not a lot of people that bring anything to the table, you know, and I hope that's not sour grapes. You know, I mean, I do get frustrated and I have been offered... I'm a celebrity. I've been offered all of them, except I know it's finished now, but Celebrity Big Brother, that's the only one they never said. But the dancing, you know, and, and I'd, I'd love to be on Strictly, but I, it's always when I'm working, you know, Christmas, you know, is a busy yeah. time for me. But, uh, you know, yes, it is frustrating, you know, but it's where it's gone, you know. But the, like I said, the word experience does not come into it. At the end of the show, when we do the best of Brian Conley, I always say, this is entertainment, this should be on the telly, and they all go, yeah, but it's just a different era now, and it's X Factor. Although I have to say, I think X Factor's getting a bit sad. Um, I still like Strictly, but I'm watching that thinking, we've actually been here now, haven't we? We've been here and bought the T-shirt, you know. Isn't mm. it time to move on? And they because really are it's, a... not, it's not a 
uh, a talent competition. It's 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 not. It is a variety show, and it's how much money we can lie in Simon Cow's pockets with. Mm. Whoa, Ark at me. They're parodying each other, oh, I'm going to get in trouble now. Oh, don't say what you like. It's only me. Nobody's listening. Um, <laughs> now, listen, before we go, have I missed anything? Because I haven't got to one of the questions that our producers have written, so no <laughs> point writing those. They wasted their time, haven't they? As always, a uh, real pleasure talking to you. And um, you, you've got so much going for you and, and where you go next is always interesting to me because who'd have thought you'd end up in a frock taking over from Michael Ball who'd have I thought know. you know people would still be paying tickets to see you 20 years after <sighs> you, you first did it I'm 49 oh, don't go I've been saying doing that. it since I 12 I need to make you out yeah. to be a sex symbol can you say you're 26 or something oh god no leave that to Peter Andre <laughs> I'll just come up with the goods he can just look good yes. he can be my body double while I, I, I dish out the funnies <laughs> Katie Price is on the show later this week I haven't got a clue what to ask her I mean we've done 14 minutes here everything's fine any ideas because I mean book number 7 autobiography number 6 and she's 31 any ideas Brian <laughs> okay so what do you you know what do you feel about uh, your uh, career and she'll probably go well I feel that my career falls between the ethereal quality demanded by the intellectuals and the cultural necessity of the urban lifestyle for which you because it's a show of participant elimination of open assessment and placement of unconstrained information in the various diverse category oh Peter come back come back who knows she'll be good at waffling I suppose Brian Connolly I love you very much thanks for coming on the programme again always good to see you Alex God bless you come and see it I will not let you down